My name is Alita Williams, and I'm the president-elect of the Rotary Club of Chicago. Thank you for joining us on this special day. For several years, Belgrade and Chicago have been sister cities. There is always something, there is also something that both cities share, and that is Rotary. Today we will tell you about the Rotary Club of Chicago and Rotary International, our commitment to service and peace. If you have not done so at breakfast time, we invite you to explore the visitor center in the lobby of the building. Allow me now to introduce you now to, to our distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, they are Ambassador Christopher Hill, U.S. Ambassador in Serbia, John Huco, General Secretary and CEO of Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation, uh, District Governor Nikola Bosic, and Ms. Vera Nikolic Dimic, they are on, uh, Ms., uh, yeah, they are on Zoom, uh, she's on Zoom, uh, and Milos Milivojevic, uh, who um, is also on Zoom. Uh, you know, most of you know Milos, he's the president of a company called Uber Sirius in Serbia, uh, that they do tracking logistics and so many other things. If you, you know, if he's like Philippe, I don't know how many businesses you have, but I want to say we're very, very grateful for uh, sponsoring this event, Milos. I hope you can see us. Uh, okay, I also would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Milos Milivojevic and Danilo Tosic, who are members of our club, and they've been enormous help, help in bringing all of you here and helping us organize this event. Um, both Philip and Danilo are members of our Rotary Club of Chicago, so they can tell you about it, what we do. Uh, we will now proceed to introduce our next speaker, Ambassador Christopher Hill. Ambassador Hill has a distinguished diplomatic and academic career, of which I will read the highlights. Previous to his appointment in Serbia, Christopher Hill served as the U.S. Ambassador to Iraq, Korea, Poland, and North Macedonia, Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, as head of the U.S. delegation to six party talks on North Korea, and earlier in his diplomatic career, Ambassador Hill was a special envoy for the Kosovo crisis. Prior to that, he was a member of the U.S. negotiating team whose efforts led to the Dayton Peace Agreement ending the Bosnian War. Ambassador Hill retired from the Foreign Service in 2010. In October 2021, he was called upon to return to diplomatic service when President Biden nominated him to be the next U.S. ambassador to the Republic of Serbia. Uh, he speaks Serbian, Polish, Macedonian, and French. I invite you to read further details of Ambassador Hill's biography in our, <coughs> excuse me, in our digital fly uh, flyer. Ambassador Hill, the floor is with you. Thank you very much. And let me say what a pleasure it is, uh, first of all, to be uh, talking with the uh, Chicago Rider Rotary Club. But secondly, just to be talking to Rotarians generally, uh, my wife and I were active in the Rotary Club when, when I was retired in, in Denver. We've been active uh, with Rotary wherever we can be because I think it really brings very good people together and does some very good things. I'm especially pleased about this link between uh, uh, Belgrade, uh, the Rotary uh, uh, Club here in uh, Serbia, and in Chicago. Chicago is often described as uh, the second largest Serbian uh, city. It probably goes for Chicago for a number of countries, but uh, for Serbia, it's obviously very important. And of course, we're all excited about the prospect of a direct uh, flight from Belgrade to uh, Chicago starting, uh, starting very soon, I think in, in uh, as early as next month. So I think there's a lot going on now between the US and Serbia. We have some catching up to do. You know, we've had a very good relationship over the years, frankly, over the centuries. This is a 141st year of uh, diplomatic relations between uh, Belgrade and, uh, and Washington. But I think it's fair to say we have a little catching up to do because things have not been easy. Uh, certainly the uh, 1999, I think, was a very tough year for our relationship. 
But I can tell you, I can report to you from here in Belgrade that uh, this relationship is growing and becoming more and more successful. First of all, one of the most important aspects about it is that the United States and Serbia, we, the United States is now Serbia's leading uh, trading partner in terms of uh, services. We have major US uh, computer uh, companies here, tech companies, companies that uh, hire a lot of young uh, Serbians to uh, to work on software development and other uh, IT uh, efforts. So uh, this is this is really becoming economically significant. There's some thirty five thousand Serbs being employed by American firms in uh, in Serbia. We have a very active uh, um, uh, very active American chamber, which is a really key player in terms of uh, making sure that. Uh, you know, the uh, American businesses are, are taken care of. And I must say the American embassy and the uh, American chamber work very closely to make sure that uh, we can do all we can do in terms of uh, operating here in Serbia. So I think the, uh, the economic relationship is, is growing uh, every day. And I'm very pleased about that. Politically, I think there are also some real developments um, we uh, have a very uh, good relationship with the Serbian government. We're working very closely to address interests of, of mutual concerns. Serbia has made it very clear that uh, they are uh, that they stand firmly against the Russian aggression in Ukraine, and I think we've found a real common language in terms of dealing uh, dealing with those problems. Now, I might mention the situation in Kosovo where the Serbian government under President Vucic is committed to finding some path toward normalization. Doesn't mean Serbia is going to recognize Kosovo. I think processes like that may take a lot longer, but certainly Serbia wants to see a more normal uh, relationship with, with Kosovo. And I think the key to that is not just, of course, Kosovo, but I think it's trying to get all the countries in the region uh, Montenegro, uh, North Macedonia, Albania, uh, all these countries in the region to develop more patterns of cooperation. And in this regard, there's, I think, a very successful process known as Open Balkans, where we're uh, working together to try to make sure that these borders that bedevil this part of the world, I mean, well, there are a lot of borders in, uh, in the Balkans right now. Frankly, if you get up to the Hungarian border, the Serbian-Hungarian border, you don't encounter another border until you get up to uh, northern uh, Norway or northern, uh, northern Sweden. So the problem is to try to make sure these borders that exist in the Balkans are as they are in other parts of Europe, borders that join rather than borders that divide. So uh, we are working with, with Serbia, with uh, Albania as well, to make sure that there's a much more, a much better uh, and calmer, peaceful sense of uh, neighborly relations. And I think that is really working uh, in a very positive way. Serbia and its president and, and many of its, uh, of its political leaders have made very clear that Serbia's ambition is to join the European Union. Uh, this has been a long-term process. You know, somebody said to the uh, to the uh, Serbs the, uh, some days ago that Serbia needs to develop a European perspective, and the response from Serbia was pretty clear. We've had a European perspective. We've had it for some 17 years as we've waited for European Union membership. So we see some signs that that process may be accelerating. And we certainly see some signs that uh, Serbia and the European Union are working better together. That's important to us in the United States because we have no better allies in the world than the European Union. We are all working together to get uh, Russia to end this, this senseless and frankly barbaric uh, uh, aggression against its neighbor, Ukraine. And so I think we can see that this will... Um, that we can look for an improvement in uh, or a faster uh, accession of Serbia into the European Union. You know, in addition to the many Serb Americans uh, who really are, are extremely important to developing the the uh, you know closeness of our of our two countries, Serbia. This is many people don't know this, but this is the 100th year of. Um, 
the introduction of basketball into Serbia. So it's not uh, unusual to meet many Serbs who know more about the NBA, uh, the National Basketball Association, than Americans themselves do. And I think this is an example of the kinds of uh, cultural links that I think can bring our, bring our countries closer together. So obviously we have a we have a long way to go. We'd like to see more uh, development in the economic relationship. For those of you who haven't been to Belgrade lately, I mean, you can go down and see what has happened along the Sava River. Belgrade, like many American uh, cities, discovered it has a couple of the most beautiful rivers in, in the world uh, next to it. That is the Sava and the Danube River. Belgrade is really beautifully developing as a, uh, as a city with very modern uh, conveniences, some of the best restaurants in the world. You may have mentioned, seen a New York Times piece about the, uh, the uh, cocktail life in, uh, in Belgrade. So a lot of things are developing. But I think what is really neat about being in Serbia is to get out on one of its great highways uh, and go down and see some of these other cities, whether it's uh, Kragujevac or Valjevo or these, these other uh, secondary cities, Niš, for example, Novi Sad, and see how these other cities are developing. And I think it's there's a lot of encouraging signs about being in, in Serbia. It's not just about being in Belgrade, it's uh, throughout this country. So Serbia is really, uh, I think, progressing a long way. It's uh, very gratifying for me to come back here. I had served in Serbia many years ago, earlier on in my career, and to come back and see the uh, prog progress in this relationship with the sense that there's more that uh, can be done and definitely more that must be done. So thank you all. It's great to, great to see you all uh, here on this uh, special day. And I just want to thank uh, Rotary once again for bringing us all together. Thank you. Ambassador Hill, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we had the pleasure of meeting you a few years ago at a one Rotary District Conference in Denver. So, um, you know, I am, we're so happy that you made your time available to us uh, this Saturday. Um, now, I open the floor for questions and Q&A. If somebody would like to uh, raise your hand, Alita will come to you with a microphone. And we have a few minutes, so this is a very unique opportunity to speak with the U.S. Ambassador in Serbia. Okay, well, I see a lot of optimism, uh, and <laughs> this is a bit overwhelming. <laughs> so, uh, well, Ambassador, is there anything else that you would like to tell us before? Uh, of course, you're welcome to stay with us. Uh, John Hugo is going to be our next speaker, and um, uh, we, you know, we would like you to stay as long as uh, you, it is possible for you. So... Um, Anything else you would like to add? Let me just say, I, I want everybody there to know that uh, our American embassy is very, very open to all Americans to, uh, if you have any issues, problems, please uh, come and see us. We're here to serve American citizens, to help them with various issues. Uh, we have many uh, Serbian people coming to the embassy for visas. Look, I wish we could give visas to everybody, but we have American uh, laws to implement, but we certainly do our best in a very fair way. And we're very, uh, we, we're really proud of our relationship with uh, Serbian people. And uh, just the other day, I sent off a group of Serbian high schoolers to all kinds of parts in the U.S., you know, from rural areas to, uh, to urban areas and gave them a little pep talk of life in the United States. So I just want you to know our embassy is really dedicated to the proposition that we can bring us all uh, closer together. So thank you very much. And uh, I guess I'll sign off right now and uh, hope you have a great, uh, great conference. Thank you. We have one question for you, Ambassador. Okay, sure. Your Excellency, greetings from Chicago. I'm District Governor Nicola from District of Serbia and Montenegro. I just uh, wanted to underline uh, the cooperation and support of USAID to the global grants of Rotary Foundation in Serbia and Montenegro through the program of Hearts of Europe. 
and that that cooperation uh, brought 1.5 million dollars in last few years to these two countries and that's also one uh, very important way of collaboration between United States and uh, our countries uh, in district uh, uh, Rotary district in Serbia and Montenegro. Well, that's that's terrific, and uh, let's do more of that. Uh, you know, you can't do any better than dealing with the uh, with Rotary, Rotary International. We're very very pleased to do everything we can do to help. So, thank you very much for your comment. All right, um, we will proceed now to uh, introduce John Hugo. And it John Hugo was the General Secretary and CEO of Rotary International and the Rotary Foundation. From 2004 to 2009, John Hugo was Vice President for Operations and Compact Development for the Millennium Challenge Corporation, a U.S. government agency established in 2004 to deliver for foreign assistance to the world's poorest countries. At MCC, he was a principal United States negotiator for foreign assistance agreements to 26 countries in Africa, Asia, South America, the Middle East, and the former Soviet Union. Uh, John was an international partner at, at the law firm Baker and McKenzie. Back in the 1990s, he helped establish the office in Moscow and was the managing partner at its offices in Kiev and Prague. John was an adjunct professor at Georgetown University and a visiting scholar at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. He is a member of the Council of Foreign Relations. John holds a law degree from Harvard University, a master's in modern history from Oxford University, where he studied as a Marshall Scholar. He is fluent in Ukrainian, Russian, Spanish, and Portuguese, and English. For further <laughs> details of John's biography, uh, we also invite you to look at our digital flyer. Uh, John, you're welcome to join us. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much, Marga and Alita, for that uh, very, very warm welcome. And I'd like to welcome all of you both here uh, in person at One Rotary Center in, in Evanston and also our, all of our participants virtually. I'd also like to thank Ambassador Hill, if he's still on the line, for, his, for taking the time to, to meet with us and to thank him for all that he has done uh, to work on serving U.S. relations through the years, and of course, in other areas of the world as well. He's one of the great, great diplomats that America has had over the past uh, over the past uh, past decades. So again, welcome all of you to uh, to here to One Rotary One Rotary Center. As Marga mentioned, I have the the ple pleasure a pleasure and privilege of being the the General Secretary and CEO of Rotary International and the and the Rotary and the Rotary Foundation. Uh, I, in that role, my principal uh, sort of obligation is to oversee the Rotary International Secretariat. Uh, we have about 800 employees uh, for Rotary International worldwide. About 575 of those employees are here in this building in Chicago, which, again, this is our world headquarters. And then we have another 225, 250 employees in our seven offices outside the United States. Uh, in Europe, our office is based in, in Zurich. Uh, we have about 45 employees there, and of course it's the Zurich office that is the primary support for Rotarians in Serbia and, uh, and, and uh, Montenegro. Delighted that Governor Nicola is able to, uh, to join us, as well as so many, as I said, so many other Rotarians from, uh, from Serbia and Montenegro, as well as I understand the number of of non of non uh, of non Rotarians, so perhaps I can start by just giving you a bit of a history about the building you're in now, uh, and tell you a bit about Rotary International. Uh, hopefully, even for our Rotarians who are participating, there'll be some new new information, uh, and then just provide with for you an overview of or where of where we stand as an organization, some of the big initiatives that we are uh, undertaking, uh, and then finally close with just some thoughts on, on, on uh, what Rotary is doing uh, to support Ukraine. 
uh, because that really is a truly uh, incredible story that I think every, every Rotarian certainly can be extremely proud of what our organization has done to help Ukraine in this very, very difficult, difficult moment. So as I mentioned, the building that we're in now, uh, One Rotary Center, uh, is our world headquarters. We purchased this building back in 1985. Uh, it used to be a, a hospital administration company that owned it. It's been a very good investment for Rotary International. We use about half of the building for our own purposes, and we lease the other half out. And so it's really one of the premier office buildings here on the North Shore of, of, um, uh, of Chicago. Uh, we, of course, receive visitors from all over the world. Thousands and thousands of Rotarians come every year uh, to visit us uh, to visit us here. We have some, unfortunately it's a Saturday, we won't be able to provide you with a, a tour of the, of the building. We have a number of exhibits, very interesting exhibits throughout, throughout the building, but I would urge you to, uh, to at least see what we have on the ground floor. Um, and one of, the, one of the objects that we have that you can look at is the, uh, a replica of the uh, uh, office where the first rotary meetings were, were held in downtown Chicago, room 711 in the Union Building. And the Rotarians from the Chicago area uh, created this uh, replica of that office, and we moved it here about 10 years ago to, to, one, um, to one Rotary, one rotary uh, Center. A lot of people ask, well, how did the name Rotary come about? And, um, you know, back in uh, 1905, uh, a gentleman by the name of Paul Harris uh, came to Chicago from uh, Vermont, which is a state in the northeast of the United States. It was a very rural state. And so he came to Chicago, a large city, and he really felt out of place. He was a lawyer. And he said, why don't I create a club, get together, uh, groups of business leaders, uh, business leaders, both to get together to have a good time, but also to help each other with their businesses and provide referrals to each other. And so 1905, uh, the first Rotary Club was established, the Rotary Club of, of Chicago. And uh, that's why I like to say that uh, Rotary was really the original LinkedIn before anyone had even heard of LinkedIn, because the primary purpose of that first club was not only to bring together business leaders to enjoy each other's company, but also to help each other with their, with their businesses. And so those first meetings were held in that replica office that we have down, uh, downstairs. And it was called Rotary because the original members would rotate their weekly meetings among the offices of the various, of the various members. And so that's how the name Rotary came, came about. And so from those very modest beginnings in, in 1905, uh, the idea took off, and very quickly we had uh, rotary clubs uh, throughout, throughout, throughout the world. And today we have um, over 37,000 rotary clubs. We have 1.2 million uh, Rotarians. Uh, we also have uh, an additional 200-some uh, thousand what we call rotaractors, which are uh, clubs based around um, people from 18 to 30 some years of age. So from that very modest beginning in 1905, we today have really an unmatched international platform of almost 46,000 clubs and 1.4 million members. Uh, we're in every country and geographic region in the world, almost uh, a few places where you don't have a rotary club. In fact, I like to say there's probably not a politician in the world who doesn't have a Rotarian as a constituent. We do have an incredible global footprint, and we can, with that global footprint, can truly, truly make a, a huge difference in the world. So Rotary started in 1905 really as, as LinkedIn. That was the idea. And then about 20 years later, the Rotary Club of Chicago decided that it's really time to give back to the community. What can we do to help the community? And so the club here in Chicago started Rotary's first community service project, which was uh, putting in place public toilets in in, in Chicago. Uh, but this had a dual purpose as well, because most of the uh, Rotary Club members own businesses downtown, and they wanted to keep people downtown shopping. So by putting in the public toilets, they both provided a public service, but also were able to help their, their business. And so this concept grew up of Rotary being really a combination of professional networking, but also of giving back to the community. 
And so over the years, that idea of giving back to the community has really blossomed, has really uh, flowered. Uh, and today, if you look at what our Rotary Clubs are doing globally, locally, regionally, it's truly, it's truly incredible. So let me start with perhaps what is our sort of largest global signature initiative, and that is the eradication of polio. Back in, back in 19, uh, 1985, Rotary, a nonprofit, uh, had the audacity, and I think that's the right word, the audacity to say we're going to eradicate a disease from the face of the earth and uh, decided let's try to see if we can eradicate polio. We were joined in 1988 by the World Health Organization, CDC, the Center for Disease Control in the United States, UNICEF, um, and then more recently by the Gates Foundation and Gavi, the vaccine uh, alliance. And so back in 1985, when we started this effort, there were about 350,000 cases of polio every year in the world. Um, there were, it was in 125 countries. And through the efforts of Rotary and our partners, uh, we're now down to just two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan, where the wild polio virus is, is still circulating. And this year so far, uh, knock on wood, we've only had one case, one case of wild polio virus that was in, 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 in Pakistan. So we're on the verge of eradicating this disease. Uh, Rotarians have um, raised uh, more than $2.6 billion, billion dollars through the years for polio eradication. And that includes the various matching funds we've received from the Gates Foundation. Uh, and Rotarians, have, hundreds of thousands of Rotarians have gone around the world putting those two drops of polio vaccine into the mouths of, of children. So that is sort of our global unifying uh, project, the, the eradication of polio. But Rotary is so, so much more than that. We, went, we run one of the largest youth exchange programs in the world. Every year we send somewhere between seven and 8,000 students uh, on long-term youth exchange programs. It's not just, you know, um, Croatia to the UK, Serbia to Austria. It's Taiwan to Nigeria, it's Brazil to Japan, it's all, it's all over. And this is, these youth exchange programs are, are organized between clubs in different countries. And it's generally students go for anywhere from three months to one full, one full year. And now through the years, there are literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of students who've uh, taken advantage of this Rotary exchange program. In fact, very often when I'm representing Rotary as I travel around the world, uh, I'm amazed at how many people come up to me and say, oh, Rotary, I was a youth exchange student in Chile for a year. Changed my life. I am who I am thanks to Rotary. And that is a, that is a story that you hear, uh, that you hear quite, quite often. But the real difference that we make uh, around the world is the work that our individual clubs do. As I said, we have 46,000 clubs around the world, uh, and each of our clubs has its own personality, uh, its own focus. Some are extremely dynamic. Some are more socially or just social, get together and have a good time. Uh, but by and large, most clubs really focus on that service component. That is doing service projects either in their local community, uh, in their region, in their country, or they like to focus on international uh, projects. So the Serbian club or the Serbian district getting together with, I don't know, a club in India and, and doing a water project or a health project or vice versa or vice versa. And so throughout the world, you have this incredible network of clubs working with each other uh, to make uh, to make a to make to make a difference. And I think that's really the impact that Rotary makes. And the beauty of our organization is that if you're interested in joining, uh, there are so many different options, large clubs, small clubs, medium clubs, uh, boring clubs, really exciting clubs. Clubs that, uh, again, are, are focused on international, local, regional. There really is pretty much a, a wide variety of options in our organization. Now, a big driver of what we do work globally, of the difference that we make, is our Rotary Foundation. Uh, it's, and it's based here as well in this building. And I'm also the General Secretary and CEO of the Rotary Foundation. Every year we raise about 400, last year we raised a little over $400 million dollars from donations we receive from Rotarians from around the world. In addition, we receive $100 million every year from the Gates Foundation for polio. That money is then given back 
to Rotary clubs around the world. They provide they, uh, grants, they, they apply for grants, and uh, that money can then be used for projects dealing with water and sanitation, literacy, disease prevention and treatment, the environment, uh, peace and conflict, et cetera. And so with those projects, uh, again, Rotary Clubs will partner among themselves, provide a grant application to us here, to the Rotary Foundation. We, in turn, give that money back to the clubs to do their, to do their projects. So in short, Rotary is, is just, in my view, one of the world's best-kept secrets. Uh, it's our work to eradicate polio. It's all of the incredible work that we do around the world in our communities through our clubs. It's the youth exchange program that we, that we run. Also, every year we, we provide 100 scholarships for students to do graduate studies in peace and conflict studies around the world. We have relations with seven top universities around the world. Uh, we now have over 1,000 uh, graduates from that program. We have a $150 million endowment to support those, those scholarships who are extremely active in the peace and conflict area. In fact, if you look at the history of the United Nations, Rotary played an increasingly and a very important role. There were more than 40 Rotarians that participated in the various uh, drafting committees of the UN Charter in 1945 in, in, San, in San Francisco. And the UNESCO, the UN, Ag the UN uh, agency UNESCO, was really a result of work by Rotarians at a conference in London in the, 19, in the 1930s. So Rotary has a deep tradition for peace and conflict resolution, and it also has a deep relationship with the United Nations and in really, really making a difference. And finally, on the diplomatic front, let me close by saying that we've also played a very important role through our polio eradication efforts in leading to uh, resolving uh, conflict in a number of key uh, in a number of key areas because polio eradication it's about providing this vaccine of two drops into the mouth of a child but you can only do that if you can get to the child so if there's a war going on or if there's conflict or if there's if it's not safe you can't get to the children and so we were able to use the polio eradication process to result in ceasefires, a cessation of arms in a number of important conflicts. In Sri Lanka, we were able to convince the warring parties to put down their arms for a few days to allow us to go in and vaccinate children. That cessation of conflict for those few days led to a dialogue between the parties and eventually for a peace. The same thing happened in El Salvador and several other places. We called them days of tranquility, where they put down their arms, we'd go in and vaccinate, that then led to peace conversations and ultimately a, 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 a peace. So even through things like polio eradication, Rotary and our partners have had a significant impact on resolving a number of conflicts uh, around, around the world. And I think that ultimately is the most important value of Rotary. We bring people together from all over the world through the projects we do, through our various events that we hold around the world. Uh, we really do bring people from different faiths, cultures, regions, languages uh, together. There are no second-class citizens in Rotary. Uh, we are really a, a microcosm of the world, and I think we are a shining example to the world of what can happen when you bring people together to make a difference and to do good and to do good in the world. So finally, let me close by just uh, uh, giving you a, a brief um, a brief summary of what we have done as an organization for Ukraine. As Ambassador Hill mentioned, um, this horrific war, unprovoked war, uh, started by Russia against Ukraine. Um, All right, thank you. If I was muted up till now, I apologize to everyone. 
is here, uh, is here virtually participating. And so in typical Rotary fashion, we, um, we uh, Rotarians immediately responded to this crisis. We established here at the Rotary Foundation a Ukrainian disaster response fund. Within a matter of weeks, we raised $15 million, uh, an unprecedented response by Rotarians from around, uh, from around the world. Uh, and then we used that money that we raised to provide grants to Rotary clubs and districts in Ukraine, in the neighboring countries, and throughout the world to help with uh, medicines, uh, fire trucks, ambulances, uh, and of course helping the, the refugees as they were they were fleeing Ukraine. But that's just really a portion of what we were able to, and that money now has been unfortunately spent. We've reopened that fund, and we're again regathering funding for Ukraine. And again, you, Rotarians have been very generous in that regard. But in addition to the, what the funds we've raised here locally. Uh, internationally here in, 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 uh, in, at the Rotary Foundation, Rotary clubs from around the world have been raising money and working directly with refugees, working directly with Ukraine. I would suspect probably another at least $20 million has been raised and spent by Rotary clubs directly. And so as an organization, we've probably given 35 to $40 million worth of assistance to, to Ukraine uh, over the past, uh, over, since this horrific, this horrific war started, and I know Serbia has been a, Serbian Rotarians have been huge supporters of, of, of our, of our colleagues in, in Ukraine. And what's interesting is, the Ukrainian district, and we have about, uh, we had before at the start of the war about 1,200 Rotarians in Ukraine, 60 some clubs. Um, what they did is they received from us three $100,000 streams of grants. They used one stream to buy ambulances and fire trucks and we could once they spent that money we would replenish it they used the other hundred thousand stream to buy medicine but the uh, the third one is they wanted to make sure every single rotary club was participating in this relief effort and so they used that third one hundred thousand dollar stream to provide micro grants to every rotary club in ukraine to, to do things in their local community and what's interesting and this is a clear example of how having an impact makes a difference for an organization. Our membership, Rotary membership in Ukraine has increased by almost 30% since the start of the war. So think about this, people whose homes have been destroyed, have to send their family abroad, death, destruction, lost their businesses, continuing to work to help their people. People in Ukraine saw what was happening and they're joining our organization even in the middle of this terrible terrible, horrific, horrific war. So again, I'd like to thank all of our Serbian colleagues who are here for your support uh, for, for Ukraine. Again, and I'm very proud of the fact that Rotary as an organization has made an incredible, incredible difference uh, in, in, in helping, uh, helping Ukraine in this difficult time. And then finally, my last thought on this is that when this war ends, um, I think Rotary can play a huge role in Ukraine's reconstruction, but also in trying to bridge the huge chasm between Ukraine and Russia that has developed because of this war. Obviously, the hatred in Ukraine, understandably, is very deep, very profound. I think it's going to take generations to overcome these, these differences. But I think Rotary, we have a tradition of bridging differences, of bringing people together. And so I think Ukraine and all of uh, Rotary and civil society in general will, will play an extremely important role in rebuilding Ukraine but also in helping to bridge these differences and try to bring long-term sustainable peace and tranquility to that, to that part of the world. So thank you all very much for coming. Welcome again to One Rotary Center. I'm delighted that you're able to be here. Last time I was in Serbia was in 1980, a long time ago, still Yugoslavia, uh, and I enjoyed my visit there very much and listening to uh, Ambassador Hill. I think it's time to, it's time to come back. It's time to come back again. Clearly, the country has changed quite a bit, and I look forward to, to doing that. And again, thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy your stay here, your stay in Chicago. And, um, and thank you again, to those of you who are Rotarians, for everything that you're doing, both for Serbia, for your region, and for the world at large. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, General Secretary. Are there any questions in the room? I've got one on my... So online, the question, you have two questions. Do you have time to visit 
District 2483. <clears throat> um, they said they haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> um, Belgrade, Sava. Yes, Bobby, as I said, I was, last time I was in Serbia was in 1980, so I think it's, it's high time that I, that I go back. I look forward to uh, working with the governor and uh, to seeing if I can find a time to, to come because I'd really like to do that. I'm really looking forward to it. Second question was, was there ever a country that Rotary refused to aid? Well, there are a number of, the question was, is there ever a country that Rotary has refused to, uh, to aid? Well, there are a number of countries that obviously be for legal reasons and, and sanctions reasons we can't operate in North Korea, uh, Cuba, a number of countries. And so those were limited by, as an organization, what we can, uh, what we can do. But again, I think one of the beauties of Rotary is that it's truly an organization that looks beyond ethnicity, religion, historical differences, and really, and really brings and really brings people together. And, and so uh, we see over and over again as conflicts happen around the world, people step up and help. Indians helping Pakistanis, Pakistanis helping uh, helping helping Indians, uh, as an example. And, and, and throughout uh, countries that perhaps historically have had tensions, Rotarians look beyond those differences and and help. So uh, other than sort of legal formal restrictions on helping, uh, no, we do not blacklist or not work with, with given countries if there's an interest by Rotarians to do so. Another question was, um, how, do, how does Rotary deal with um, the challenges of gaining new members? The question was, how does Rotary deal with the challenge of getting, of getting new members? And it's interesting, we've, as, as an organization, we've had about, we've been at about 1.2 million Rotarians for the past 20, 20 some years. And we've been able to maintain that level um, because of significant growth in Asia, uh, India in particular, Taiwan, Korea. Uh, we're seeing significant growth in parts of Africa, uh, parts of um, Eastern Europe with the fall of the Soviet Union. Uh, Lithuania, for example, has, is a small country with large proportion number of, of Rotarians. Uh, Bulgaria, Romania, Serbia, Ukraine. So we've seen we've seen growth, obviously, in in the in the uh, uh, former Soviet Union, former Warsaw Pact countries. Um, but it is a challenge in countries such as the United States, Australia, New Zealand, UK, where we've been seeing um, a declining membership. And so what we are doing to try to address that problem is to really rethink in those countries where we have. Uh, the declining membership, the product that we offer to the marketplace. Uh, and that is, what, what is the product we're offering? It's the club experience. When you join a Rotary Club, you're buying that experience. And you pay for that with your time and with your money. And so we need to, in those countries, modify that experience, create a perhaps more interesting experience for potentially new members. And again, it's not everywhere. There's parts of the United States, Canada, Australia, places where we've been seeing a decline in membership that are doing extremely well and other places where we are, where, where, where are not. So we're really focusing now on this concept of flexibility. Uh, one size does not fit all. And perhaps the traditional club model works in Serbia and they, it's very successful, carry on. But if it's not working, then now is the time to be flexible, adapt, and, and modify somewhat the product that we're offering. Okay, and we have one last question. Um, a member said that they have a problem with their zone being too big, different countries from different continents, different problems and focuses. Is there anything that can be done to make their zone a little more cohesive? It's obviously a big problem in that we, we do need to, zones are, are divided, are created primarily for electing directors to the Road International Board of Directors. And so we have a finite number of directors, 19, and, um, the, and so we need to divide the world into you know, different, different zones to elect, to elect the, 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 the directors. And so it's a huge challenge. We try to group zones as, 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 as rationally as we, as we, as we can. Um, but there is a limitation because we don't have 50, 60, 70 board members where we can make each of these zones uh, smaller. But I think most of the action in Rotary really happens at the club level and at the district level. As you know, our clubs 
our, our 30, 46,000 clubs are sort of our organized around districts. And there'll be 60 to 100 clubs per district. Uh, that's really where the work of Rotary happens, less so at the, at, the zone, at the zone level. But it's a limitation in terms of the number of directors we have on the, on the Rotary International Board of Directors. Okay, thank, thank you so much for, for having me. Well, John, thank you for your time. And, um, thank you, you know, John. Yes, yes, of course, Anita. The bombing in 99, because that question popped out so many times, so I have to mention, mm -hmm. because I was there in that time. Did Rory Club did any help to the civilians and the people of Serbia in bombing in '99? I don't know. I, I took I, I 1999. I was in Prague. Um, I was a Syrian, but I, I just don't know. I, I took this job in 2011, so I I could find that out for you. I could. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, they cannot hear me online. Um, because Rotary Club does not care about the culture, the, um, your um, nationality and everything, you care about the people. So it's action for the people. Um, when it, it's a war between two countries, there's people on both sides. So that's my question, does Rotary Club really help people? Or, you know, you are not capable of providing help to every people, uh, like from both sides. That's my question. Like right now in Ukraine, it's war. That's um, a lot of people, you know, <laughs> and that uh, people used to be the same country. It's the same thing with Yugoslavia before we separate. We are all the same people living on the Balkans. And unfortunately, we're all together now here in America or in Australia, New Zealand. It does not matter what, where you came from. But my question is, does Rotary Club help really people? Or it, it does have to do with the political decisions or somebody from above? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's a very good question. First of all, Rotary International, where we are today, is really the umbrella organization for our thousands of clubs. That's we are a political. We don't take political positions. Uh, we've, we're focusing on making a difference and doing good in the world. The work of Rotary doesn't happen from here. I don't sit here and say, okay, Serbian Rotarians, please go help, I don't know, go help Portugal because they've had a, uh, an earthquake or something. Or Spanish Rotarians, please go help, uh, you know, uh, India because they've had a flood. It's Rotarians, the Rotary clubs themselves, go into action, organize, and carry out the help that they want to, want to do. So it's very gra grassroots. It's people to people. And as a, as, as a result, we are able to, even though at a political level there may be a conflict between the two countries, at the people to people level, Rotarians are able to work together to make a difference and to, and to help each other. So as a global organization, we're apolitical. We don't take political views. We don't issue political political statements, um, uh, but the work that's done is really, is really done club to club with you know, thousands of these clubs springing into action to make, to make a difference. And so it's really up to the clubs to determine, and frankly, they've done a fantastic job over the last 118 years to go beyond these differences in, on a people-to-people -people level to make a difference. You know, Anita, I, I don't have specifics, but as you know, uh, the earthquake in Turkey, the two earthquakes, uh, a lot of Syrians have been affected as well. So we are not only helping the Turkish citizens, but also finding ways to help the Syrian uh, citizens. We cannot, we don't have clubs in Syria, but we've had returns from Lebanon saying, how can we find a way to help those that were on the Indian side? I don't know. 
how that hap if that happened or what form it took. You know, Shade and I were very busy trying to rally um, many clubs from the United States to donate. Um, you know, we're going to be, but Rotary in Turkey is going to be building a container city so people have a place to live. Now, we're not leaving the Syrians, you know, a, 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 you know, to fend for themselves. So that is not the spirit of, a, of Rotary. And I wouldn't be surprised if one Rotarian found a way to sneak in in North Korea and help somebody, you know. But for example, another thing that touched my heart in that that happened between India and Pakistan, Rotarians from the Punjab, the northern province of India, you know, they have a program uh, for doing pediatric heart surgery to children from, from between India and Pakistan. So, you know, uh, we have uh, Israeli and Palestinian Rotarians working together in spite of all the things that you hear. But, you know, this is what allows us to be so flexible, um, you know, and, and provide aid where it's necessary in, in very quickly. You're welcome. I did notice that there were a couple more comments online. Um, as I did put in, I put in my email address. If you have very specific questions for the General Secretary, we will gladly forward those questions to him so that we stay on time and stay conscious of everyone's time. Okay, well, and now uh, I would like to introduce our next uh, speaker. Uh, she is Vera Nikolic Dimit. She is the Executive Director of the American Chamber of Commerce in Serbia. Ms. Dimic, uh, welcome to our uh, event. Uh, the floor is yours. Sorry. Sorry, I hope I'm unmuted I'm now. Um, I'm very happy for being with you. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your event. This is actually my first time uh, being uh, the part of some uh, Rotary event, and I'm very glad that I'm able to learn about your organization. And uh, I will be short in sharing the information about my organization. Uh, I believe that uh, we have uh, some people of Serbian origin, of Balkan origin, different origin. I would like to greet you all, especially with Dobro uh, Jutro ili Dobro Dan. Zavisno des edite. And I will uh, take one or two minutes of your time to uh, present the American Chamber of Commerce in Serbia. American Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce in Serbia is part of the network of American Chamber of Commerce that exist existing all over the world. So we are accredited by the US Chamber of Commerce in Washington. And we are a member of 45 MCHAMs from around the Europe. So the aim of the American Chamber of Commerce is similar as all around the, the Europe but, and the world, but I would say that we have some additional tasks to do because uh, in Serbia, we are lacking some regulation and some implementation regulations. And I would say that we are much more than event organization, but we are like, uh, as Ambassador Hill said, doing some kind of serious work uh, uh, in order to improve the business environment. Besides this uh, uh, hard task, uh, we are doing the networking, professional development of our members uh, and, and other nice, uh, nice things uh, to, to network our uh, members. At the moment, we have 240 members. Uh, some 30% of them is uh, of um, US capital uh, originally, like uh, br famous brand names like Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Oracle, ball packaging, uh, NCR, etc. But we have also European companies and we have a Serbian companies. Uh, so we are kind of, let's say, a strong, strong association that uh, many companies would like to be a part of. Um, we are present 21 years in Serbia, which is quite, let's say, we are mature now in terms also of U.S. laws. But you have some American Chamber of Commerce like in Europe, uh, which are more than 100 years old, old. That means actually that we have to improve our economic relations with, uh, with the U.S. and that we are uh, quite young in this, these terms. 
So hopefully we are seeing, seeing more and more US capital uh, coming to Serbia re recently. And I'm inviting you all, regardless whether you are physical persons or owning some companies to think about uh, investing in Serbia. We are here for uh, all your questions. And although I think my, I, I see my photo is at, at the moment vague, at least for myself, but we will uh, try to give you a clear answer to any of the questions you uh, may have after, after this event about uh, how to invest in Serbia or how to improve uh, Serbian-US uh, relations. Uh, to uh, add what uh, Ambassador Hill already, already said, uh, we as a chamber are doing an economic relations, so we don't um, uh, do anything beside economy, which is what is a good, good thing. And uh, we are, uh, this year we will also focus on a good results that Open Balkan um, project will, uh, could bring to, to the countries in the region. So this is shortly from me. If you have any questions, I believe that orga organizers could give you my contact and I will be happy to answer you together with my team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, we're delighted that you can be here with us. Now we have a question for District Governor Nicola. Has anybody asked Ms. Vera to join Rotary? Because you may know that, you know, we promote each other's businesses. So, uh, you know, we do the networking, uh, you know, socially, but also professionally. So this is something very important to take into consideration. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, we don't put, want to put you on the spot, but why not, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for being with us. It's a delight to have you. And now, uh, Alita, you go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Vera. Um, we would like to, I would like to introduce the Rotary District Governor of Serbia and Montenegro, Nikola Bolshevich. Let me start in Serbian. Dobar dan. Dobrodošli na zajednički sastanak Rotary kluba Chicago i Rotary distrikta Srbije i Crna Gora. Iskoristit ću ovaj trenutak na našem jeziku da pozdravim Rotarijance iz Crne Gore, Srbije, Hrvatske, Bosne i Hercegovine, Slovenije, Grčke, Severne Makedonije, Bugarske, Rumunije, Libana, to je ono što sam uspio do sada da uhvatim, naravno, i Sjedinjenih američkih država. Nastavit ću, naravno, na engleskom jeziku, ali želim pre svega da vas na ovom zajedničkom sastanku pozdravim i na našem jeziku. Thank you very much. I just say in Serbian language that I'm very happy that we have at our meeting Rotarians from Serbia, Montenegro, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Slovenia, North Macedonia, Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, Lebanon, and uh, United States of America, and of course a lot of other countries that maybe I didn't recognize uh, at, uh, at the Zoom meeting. Uh, I'm very honored that at this meeting we have, uh, we have representatives from all these countries, but I want to underline the presence of the governor of district of Croatia, the governor of district of North Macedonia and Slovenia, the past district governors of Serbia and Montenegro, Bane, Vlada, Zorica, Danilo, that he is present here with us. Uh, I want to recognize the presence of past international director, Dinka, Rotary coordinators, and uh, other senior leaders of uh, Zone 21. And uh, I'm very happy that we can have this opportunity for the second time to have uh, the joint meeting with Rotary Club One uh, to exchange our thoughts, our ideas, and to show how can we collaborate much more, how can 
we uh, establish a better relations between United States and Serbia and Montenegro, between two, between uh, more than two Rotary clubs. And I'm thanking to Secretary General of Rotary International, Mr. Hugo, for spending time with us and for uh, giving us opportunity to present our district of 1,200 members and 67 clubs and to give opportunities to all these Rotarians from this zone uh, to uh, participate in such meeting, to meet Rotarians from Rotary Club One and to meet, meet uh, senior Rotary officers. This is also opportunity for developing a business. And I'm very happy that we can see it here, together, here to, today at in-person meeting a lot of representatives uh, of Serbian diaspora and diaspora from Montenegro here in Chicago uh, with a very good uh, business and good potentials. And I hope that uh, this collaboration can uh, bring us something more together with AMCHEM in Serbia or other business uh, opportunities. So Rotary is a huge network and Rotary is giving us opportunity to develop ourselves giving us opportunity to collaborate, to meet people all around the world, to develop our businesses and to help. And I'm very happy that I can say that we can feel the energy of synergy here, that, can, that, that we can feel the energy of uh, solidarity here, that uh, we can uh, feel the energy of opportunities for all, for all of, of us and that is the Rotary. And uh, I think that we will continue with global grants, not only in Serbia and Montenegro, but we will participate in global grants all around the world. Already we supported some of the projects from Ukraine to Kenya, some of the project in, in projects in Asia, in Europe. And I'm very thankful to all Rotary clubs in the United States that were supporting global grants in Serbia and Montenegro, together with the USAID program Hearts of Europe, uh, helping kids having better education, helping kids having be better health, helping uh, local economical development. And I'm promising that we will try to join different worldwide global grants of uh, Rotary Foundation and other Rotary clubs to be solidar with the Rotarians all around the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, District Governor, for being here with us today. Um, next, we'd like to introduce Milos Milivojevic. You say it? <laughs> Milivojevic, our generous sponsor and president of Wirus, a trucking and logistics company based in Serbia. He is also the District Rotariac representative for District 2483 for Serbia and Montenegro. Milos, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alita. First of all, I would like to say that I'm happy to be here. And I know this sounds cliche, but in my case, it's truly not. And there are two main reasons for that. First is that I'm proud member of Rotary International, world's largest and most successful humanitarian organization. And second is that I have the opportunity to address in front of my fellow Serbians my friends from all over the world via Zoom, and especially to Serbian diaspora from Chicago, which is, as Ambassador Hill mentioned, second largest Serbian city. Chicago is also a place where Rotary International was founded in 1905, so this makes my satisfaction even bigger. All of us who live and work in Serbia can testify the impact and the significance that Serbian diaspora has on our society, and it's been like that throughout history. I will not spend a lot of time talking about history now, but there are some people worth noting, like, for example, Mikhailo Pupin, 
who was famous Serbian American inventor who came to United States very young. He was able to use all the opportunities that American society offered him and eventually became professor at one of the world's leading universities, Columbia University, and also president of New York Academy of Sciences. He never forgot about his home country and his contribution to Serbian society is enormous. Although there are many other examples like that throughout history, I would like to focus today on what Serbian diaspora is doing right now. And uh, let me start with one interesting fact that says that 3.7% of Serbian GDP is made from family assistance that comes to Serbian diaspora directly. Totally 7% of Serbian GDP is made on different contributions that Serbian diaspora has for our country, including businesses, economy, and based on those criteria, Serbia is ranked among top European, and not only European, but also world countries. Chicago individually is by far the most significant contributor to all those percentages. If all companies that are operating in Serbia and are being owned by Serbian diaspora, especially from Chicago, would integrate in one company, they would be one of the largest employers in our country, right after EPS and Posta Serbia. And this is what I believe is most important and most significant contribution they're making towards our country. Serbian diaspora is also well known for its philanthropic activities. They are helping in reconstruction and building of different hospitals, schools, kindergartens, educational centers. They are investing in education, investing in different programs for boys, girls, elderly people, and not only in Serbia, but also in Chicago. I know many of them personally, and uh, I had the opportunity to witness many of their philanthropic activities. And every time when we speak about this topic, I get fascinated and inspired by the level of attention, by the level of love, by the level of care and perseverance of their na national identity they have for, for our country. I know they don't speak about this very often, but this kind of stuff are worth mentioning, if nothing, at least to set the right example for other people. Now it's 6.16 here in Serbia, so it's almost dinner time, and it's 11.16 in Chicago, so I guess you're still in the middle of breakfast time, but we were still able to gather together on this meeting in order not only to celebrate philanthropy, but also to celebrate opportunities for personal growth, opportunities for personal development, developing ourselves as better human beings and thinking on greater cause and greater goals. And I couldn't think of any better place to celebrate it than Rotary International Headquarters in Evanston. I am honored to witness this synergy between world's largest and most successful humanitarian organization and already proven people, all attendance on this meeting, but especially Serbian diaspora from Chicago who lives on such high moral, ethical and professional standards. And I would like to conclude my speech right on that one. Thank you very much for your attention. It was a privilege to speak in front of you. And I'm certain that this is just one sip in the ocean of good deeds that we are gonna continue doing in future as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mila. Um, unfortunately, our club president is still en route to get here. He's hit some traffic. Well, oh, come on up here. <laughs> this is your section. Come on up. <laughs> All right. Let, let, let me say. Yes. Okay. No. What I would like is to thank all the VIPs that are present uh, at, at the Zoom call. I see several PDGs. So thank you for being here. Uh, we really appreciate your your participation. Okay. All right. All right.
Good morning uh, to everybody here. Good morning, everybody on, online. Thanks to the speakers, especially DG Nikola Bocic. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. Came all the way from Serbia uh, to attend in person uh, for the celebration. Nicola and and uh, Rotary One. Um, you know, this is a great organization. We're honored to be close to Rotary International here. We have uh, you know uh, local projects, global projects. Margaret is part of our one program, which is a great opportunity. There are scholarships. We work together. Chicago school system. And, um, and perhaps, Anita, would you like to tell this audience of business people about Job One? Wonderful <laughs> program. Anita, go ahead. Hi. So the Rotary Club of Chicago has a signature program called Job One, in which we recruit Chicago high school juniors and seniors. We give them significant job training and get them ready for the, to get them ready to work in the world, and then we go out and recruit wonderful businesses to hire our students at whatever the prevailing minimum wage is. So as we all know, when we're in high school, no one really pays you regular minimum wage. They pay you like $9 an hour and say, you're a high schooler. We want our students to learn what it's like to receive a real paycheck. We want our students to be able to save money for college and to get ready and to also know what it's like to be a part of their local economy and what that really means. And so all of our employers hire our students, they're mentors to our students, and many, many of our employers hire those students back year after year, and many of our students have gone back to become working parts of those organizations. And that is one of our wonderful projects that we have had now for 17 years in the city of Chicago. So if you would like any further information about that, we would love to have you. It's on our website at rotaryone.org. And then Margaret can talk about Women of the Year. Yes, the Women of the Year is uh, an event <clears throat> we celebrate every year honoring women who have had an impact, uh, a social impact um, in the um, or in the city of Chicago. Uh, this is going to be our 10th year of, of celebrating women. And those of you who would like to come to the celebration, it is going to take place in, on May um, 17th, oh, May 16th of this year at the Union League Club. Um, it is a really wonderful event um, because we're fortunate to be in touch with a lot of nonprofits in the city, and we have found really remarkable women that have helped people in innumerable ways. So, um, yes, speaking of the global projects that we are doing, we have, of course, you know, we respond to crises such as Turkey and Ukraine, but also we have health projects going on in Senegal and Bolivia, and um, as well as uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil, um, and, and other countries. So if you would like to more, lo know more about our uh, global projects, reach out to me after here. But for those of you uh, in the Zoom call, I would like to tell you that Milos and us are in conversations of developing a global grant uh, together because it is going to be as of July 1st of 2022, Rotaractors, who are the young professionals in Rotary, um, I tell you those, um, is, is they can be full partners in a global grant and can um, apply for funds from the Rotary Foundation. So we're looking forward to working together. And um, I know that with Milos behind it and his team, it's going to be a great success. All right. I'm to say thank you. You know, we have somebody very quiet in the room that made this possible, and that is Eric Williams. Thank you, Eric, for, for <laughs> taking care of the Zoom. Alita has been the masters in logistics and coordination here. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do when you're president. So we have to, okay, fellow Rotarians, yeah, we have to. Before warning, <laughs> the energy of bunny, she'll just walk, walk right over you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, and then uh, thank you, speakers, Nicola. Thank you for being with us. We were we have been honored, PDG Danilo. It's great to have you here as well, John. Thank you for speaking with us, and thanks to the ambassador and Miss Vera. 
And um, and thank you for Rotary International for hosting us today. Thanks, everybody.